yes, yeah, so I'm having the pleasure to talk to um, Professor uh, Jeroen van Marienboer today. Currently, he's the research program director of the Graduate School of Health Professions Education uh, at Maastricht University in the Netherlands uh, with the chair in uh, learning and instruction. Uh, Jeroen, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but uh, from what I know, your areas of expertise are in instructional design, medical education, cognitive load theory, complex learning, and of course, you're famous for the 4CID, uh, core component instructional design model. That's what you're famous for as well. Anything I missed? No, I think these are the more, most important things, yeah. Great. Uh, it's not an easy question because I could mention many things, but I'm inclined to go back to the uh, uh, origin of my own research uh, 30, 35 years ago. Uh, my research on work examples. Uh, and the, the basic idea is that uh, uh, people, especially when they are novices in the field, learn much more from studying work examples than from trying to solve the equivalent problems themselves. And there has been an enormous amount of research nowadays on, on work examples, uh, examples of how to solve problems. Um, and I think this is still not fully implemented uh, in, in training and, uh, and education. Uh, there are still many people who have to believe that we best learn problem solving by solving problems, which is simply incorrect. Uh, novices learn much more from studying work examples. I'd, I'd like to mention one uh, principle that is very related to it, namely variability and variability of practice. Uh, when we are talking about the teaching of problem solving skills, reasoning skills, decision making skills, uh, one example is never enough. We always need uh, a set of examples that is showing the vari variation in the problem solving process. So uh, one example is okay, but uh, two or three or four examples is much better, especially when the ex examples show the variation that we also encounter in the real world or in the real profession. And when I look at uh, instructional materials, uh, I think almost all instructional materials, especially in the uh, professional training field, can be greatly improved by adding more examples and giving the variation in the set of examples that we provide to our learners uh, much more thought. I found this a difficult question because in general, I think it's not, not a good idea to uh, do things as soon as possible, uh, especially not in, uh, in education and training. Uh, the whole idea that we can identify a principle and then put this principle into practice as soon as possible uh, is something I don't like. Uh, because in education, there are no principles that always work. Uh, and most of the research we do is trying to identify the conditions under which a particular principle works or does not work. Uh, and that takes time. So uh, uh, what we should do in order to improve education is build theories that uh, make clear under which conditions particular guidelines and principles work and under which conditions they do not work. Uh, and that takes at least 10 or 15 years. And uh, finding a, a promising principle and then immediately uh, implementing it in our training uh, uh, is something I see as extremely risky. 
uh, and, and something I would not recommend. Uh, uh, continue with your research, uh, build a strong theory that is uh, uh, setting the, 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 the borders for when a principle uh, is really applicable so that we know under which conditions to use it and under, under which conditions not to use it. And do not rush it because rushing it is, uh, is risky, I, I think. Well, having, that, having said that, what, what I at the moment find a promising uh, development is in the field of uh, resource depletion. Uh, uh, it, it's becoming more and more clear that human working memory resources uh, decline as a function of uh, concentrated work. Uh, and we are developing more and more models, helping people to take breaks, to take pauses, uh, so that you can recover and have new energy to, to learn and to work. Uh, I find this a, a promising direction. Uh, uh, taking timeouts, taking pauses, taking breaks, and relating this to uh, resource depletion models. Uh, of course, it's something we do in training and education. We sometimes tell people to take breaks, but often uh, we do not really know what the conditions are that make it uh, helpful to take a break or to take a pause. And then we get more information on uh, uh, resource depletion in relation to taking pauses, taking breaks. I think this might be a very promising development. But again, we need more theoretical work before we can come up with uh, good guidelines for practice. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, you can uh, come up with uh, long lists with uh, myths and uh, books have been written uh, on that. Uh, what I always see as uh, a serious problem in education is maybe not a myth, but more a meta-myth. Namely, mixing up goals and methods. Uh, and this is something that is quite common in, uh, uh, in education and training. Uh, if the goal is that students learn to solve problems, the method is they must solve problems. If the goal is that students self-regulate their learning, the method is we must have them self-regulate their learning. Or when the goal is students must learn to collaborate, it's translated to the method, well, we have students collaborate. And this is uh, 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 a faulty way of thinking that we see in education and training over and over and over again. Uh, and methods are not the same thing as goals. Uh, when we think about the methods, it should be clear that it is a goal that can only be reached by explicitly teaching people. So, if we think self-regulation is important, we should deliberate, teach people how to self-regulate their learning processes. Uh, and this is a process that will start with providing examples of how that could be done. We need to scaffold and uh, provide help and support to people who are developing these self-regulated learning skills. And slowly over the months or sometimes over the years, they can develop these skills. And that's the same story for almost all domain general skills. Uh, if we think they are important, we should teach them rather than throw people in the deep, because that's what usually happens. Uh, we uh, observe that self-regulation is important. We ask students to self-regulate their own learning. Disasters happen because they're not able to do it. And then we say, well, they're not able to do it. So we stop with the process. Uh, I find this still hard to believe that this process is going, going on uh, again and again uh, and that uh, we do not realize ourselves that if we think that particular goals are important, we must deliberately help students to work towards this, these goals. And that comes with explicit teaching. Uh, and the whole discussion on 21st century skills uh, 
uh, is, is suffering from this, this mixing up of uh, calls and methods. You can only develop domain general skills in domains. Uh, that's another misunderstanding that uh, that we could teach them outside of domains, which is also uh, maybe a myth because there is strong evidence that this is impossible. 